Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is busy, and today we're checking out the Ferrum Forge N Tech. This knife was inspired by the Ferrum Forge Mordex that uh, also ProTech did a button lock version that's uh, very popular. So it's basically a smaller compact version of the Mordex by Ferrum Forge or you know just basically inspired by that knife. Now this knife was sent to me by Mike Emler who has an awesome YouTube channel. He's uh, a professional freehand knife sharpener and I'm going to link his channel in the description. Go check him out. So I've been uh, I've been watching Mike for a long time. Great dude. So I uh you know I definitely encourage you to go check his channel out. Now let's get into this knife because there's a lot of really cool things about this knife. So the steel is N690. It's got a titanium frame lock and the overall length is about 6.8 inches. Just under seven inches, and the blade length on their web or on Blade HQ it said three inches. I'm measuring two and seven eighths. You know, not a big deal, but uh, and you know, be, and I measured from the the closest point to the tip. So either way, it's about a three inch blade. Now that does make it small and compact. Let's take a couple size comparisons or do a couple size comparisons. Here is the Olamic Whipper Snapper. <laughs> Gotta love that name. They're really close. If I uh, put them, you know, butt to butt, very, very close. Then here is the Hinder. 3 inch, the XM18 3 inch, which you can see the Hinder 3 inch does have it by a little bit. And then here's the Benchmade Bug Out with my new black burlap um, scales. Very, very cool. Thanks to Talica. But yeah, you see the Bug Out's a bit bigger, you know. And then the knife that it kind of reminds me of now, and I got two different versions here, the Civivi Elementum. It kind of reminds me of a hard-use Civivi Elementum. Here's another one, just in case if that one uh, isn't coming up that good. But if you look at it, I, I put this quick stud on there, so I'll just show you this one. But if you really look at it, and these things come in lots of different handle materials. This one's been sharpened a lot. You can really see how this one's got a little bit more meat on its bones. But, yeah, you can really see why it kind of reminds me of it a little bit. Yeah, the Entech has a little bit more belly, but still, though. Now, um... Here's uh, one more size comparison. The Spyderco Techno 2. And you see how much smaller the Techno 2 is? So. But yeah, it's not a big knife at all. And one more, the Native. The Native's pretty close to it, but actually the Native is a little bit bigger. Not by much, but right there, spider crow native. So let's get into this. So there's a bunch of cool things I love about this knife. Um, one, it has the Hoback rolling detent and that's adjustable. So you can basically make the strength of the detent what you want. And we're gonna zoom in really quick so you can really look at the rolling detent. Now, if you look, you can see that it's not just a stationary uh, ceramic ball. It's actually a rolling ball, a rolling ceramic detent. So it'll actually roll in that hole. And then you can adjust it in and out to increase the strength and basically make the action the way you want. That's really cool. Love the blade shape. The... um. You know, a drop point blade, gotta love a drop point blade. Has a little bit more belly than I usually like, but still, it's a great, great blade shape. It is a flat ground blade. 
beautiful sharpening choil. This is the way sharpening choil should be done. Um, I, <laughs> I, I, being a knife sharpener, that's one thing that really grinds my gears is, uh, <laughs> is, you know, getting a knife and it's a tool, you know, this is some, something that's supposed to be used and they don't give you a dang sh sharpening choil or they, they make it where it's going to cause problems. This is beautiful. And then it also has a great stone wash that just, you know, will obviously, uh, or it will, you know, help hide a little bit more wear. Um, it did come in different scales, so I diff or different patterns. This one's the diamond pattern, which I really like. Gives you a little bit of texture, and we'll get back to the blade in just a second. But, um, and then another thing I really like is the neutral grip. It doesn't force you into any one position. It just it gives you the one not you know the one finger spot you know which m a lot of great knives have, and then gives you plenty of access to the lock bar. We'll get into the the action in just a second. And even though it's kind of a three finger knife, I can totally take advantage of pushing my fingers up and get four fingers on it, hundred um, percent. Now I'm yeah I'm pushing my way up the flipper tab. Not a big deal though. I have no problem doing that. And if I really want to get a push cut going, I'll go right over the flipper tab with not an issue, because it's a straight back. Having a straight spine like that just gives you so many more opportunities to using your knife and getting a good grip in different cutting positions. Even in the reverse, you know, like to cut ropes or whatever straps. You know, you when your fingers curl around a straight back, you're not going to get the shift that you get from knives that are maybe more curved or, you know, whatever. So that that's really nice. Now, another thing I really like about this is look at this stop pin. Nice big stop pin. Uh, this is not a big knife, and it's got a stop pin that would be good on a big knife. I love seeing that. It just makes me feel like the integrity and the strength and the build quality is, you know, is tough. I like that. I love that. It's a tool, you know, a tool, you know, especially one that's meant to be used. You want to know that it's, you know, that the that the stop pin is meant to to hold pressure. You know, I, I hate seeing them little wire, like where it's just basically looks like a wire. And I feel like I could break that under pressure. Um, now, let's get into the action really quick. Now, the action, nice and snappy. And I didn't mess with the rolling detent. And the reason why is because it's tuned perfectly. So there's no point. Like if I started adjusting it, all I would do is change it from the way it is and it's already perfect. So I can do and it, the, 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 um, the jimping on the flipper tab, it's like a rock pattern. That is awesome. And you know what? This works so good. I don't know why more flipper tabs don't incorporate this type of jimping where it's kind of just like a textured rock because it works fantastically and then you can you know you can wind up and do the push button very easily and then listen to the sound it has a really cool sound a kind of like a a, a little bit of a mechanical sound it's subtle but i like it and then the detent nice strong detent i'm not holding the lock bar by the way I like that. Blade to handle ratio is great. Nice and centered perfectly. I can touch the tip a tiny bit, but not in any way that that could ever be bad. That's great. Um, can't get the blade back here. Everything is just nice. I mean, oh yeah. And also you can see that the stop pin can be changed and, or, you know, taken out, whatever. I, I guess it's another point of contact because you have only one point here with the backspacer or the standoff and then the pivot and then the um the stop pin backspacer looks really cool i like the way it looks you know a little uh design feature and also something that actually works on the knife the clip works great it's you know not deep carry, but it's not shallow carry. It's literally right where you like to see it. I mean, 
there's not much coming out of your pocket i love the big hardware beautiful beautiful hardware i do not like t6s and you see we have all big hardware and then you can really see if you look at the hardware you can see how well done the hardware is just well done hardware the pivot <clears throat> excuse me i think this is like t15 or something fantastic i like seeing big um you know really big pivots big hardware it just to me it adds to the strength of a tool also you can see that it's got the lock bar or the um you know the steel lock bar insert and over travel stop i don't know if you can see it but it's right there it stops the the lock bar from unspringing now let's get into some of the bad so minor things minor things because some of this i don't want to go to preference right because I, li I like to look at a knife and say you know what was done that that's bad on a knife and there's not really anything bad on this but there are a couple things that i prefer like one the geometry uh it, it's a hundred and seventy thousandths thick blade stock twenty thousandths behind the edge so it's not going to be the best cutter. And for a small knife like this, this isn't a big knife. So I kind of feel like I want it to be a little more like, like this, where, you know, it's thin blade stock and thin behind the edge. This has a hollow grind, by the way. So I think a hollow grind would have served this very good. It is a flat grind. So it's more of a, in my opinion... A harder use little knife which is also cool because like for people that say you shouldn't pry with your knife well maybe but a lot of people do including me like and when you pry with your knife that doesn't mean you're prying the doors off of tanks you know you could pry a little plastic piece off of something and and it won't hurt your blade at all but just having that reassurance that you have a little bit of strength you know in your knife is a great if you use your knife like a tool, especially when I'm on the job site and if I'm doing construction, you know, who knows what I might use my knife for, you know, to separate two pieces or separate, you know, something that's clamped together that it may be, or maybe I need a little pressure underneath one side of something, lots of different things. So it does have more of a blade grind for stuff like that. And with a little package like this, I would expect it to have a little bit more of a slicing blade. Now, that being said, you could easily lay the edge back. You could easily, you know, cut with, I mean, it still cuts good. I'm not saying that it cuts bad. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that it, it could be better. You know, the, the blade geometry, the grind, you know, to, made to cut. Will it cut? Absolutely. It's still going to cut just fine. And, you know, when you got somebody like Mike putting edges on it, it's, it's, you know, obviously going to cut. And, with you know if it's yours you can change the geometry of your edge and make it to cut better you know at least from the edge point of view of when it goes into materials you know or you can sharpen it for strength i mean it's it's all up to you at that point but the actual grind pushing through materials it is a little thick another bad thing even though the the action is great the d10 ball is very late like i can't unlock it and let it fall it's always hitting the detent and then fair and forge knives do that kind of well i don't know if all of them do that but a few of the ones that i've tried do that and you mess around on that spot so you got to like push past it so what you got to do is you either got to go like that then push past it and then let it fall or let it hit it and push past it like that because you you know and it doesn't have a um the detent ramp which I think could have benefited a little bit, but it's not really that big of a deal being, you know, a small knife and everything. It's just, I wish the detent ball was higher. I wish it was like right here. That way when I unlock it, it's already past it. I mean, it's really late as you can see. My thumb can't fit back in there. So, and then you see how big it is with the rolling detent. It, you know, it, it makes you fumble on top of it a lot. You know, in order to get past it, you have to be literally like that. So, just a little thing. Um, now, the Ergos um, are great. I love the Ergos. The clip just, 
you don't even feel the clip to be honest at all. But the clip kind of looks, and also I want to say this little rounded spot, it does make it to where you can really like, you know, put that thing right in your palm. I like that. It's, I love this little neutral grip. Like I love seeing this type of grip in big knives, medium sized knives, small knives. It's just great. But the clip, you know, even though it works great, I mean, this is a great working clip, if, great for ergos, it just kind of stands out, right? Like, uh, maybe it's just me, but it kind of looks like it doesn't belong. Now, sorry, I'm hitting the camera, but that, that might be just a me thing, but it just kind of looks like it doesn't belong. You can see that Mike's really carried this thing, you know, even though it was originally, I think, a stonewashed finish. You can see all the scratches and all the love on it. I like seeing that. You know, I like seeing a tool that is loved and used, and yeah. Another bad thing um, is... You know, even though I love the big hardware, the hardware is, you know, awesome when it's this size. The pivot isn't as deep as I'd like to see it. Now, this one wasn't bad. Another knife from Ferrum Forge that I seen that really was really shallow. But this one's not as bad. I would just like to see it a little bit deeper. But in all reality, it's not bad. Now, having this little, the pin set up, I'd, I mean, I don't really understand it. I didn't take it apart. But I'd like to see just, you know, another pivot side. But, I mean, maybe this is great. I don't know. I'm guessing it's just a pin that goes through and then screws through from the other side. Um, I keep hitting the camera. But, like I said, I didn't take it apart. And so, But, you know, one thing it does do, it definitely brings down, like the look of the pivot but i don't mind the look of pivot sometimes i like when a pivot looks really tough love the ferrum forge logo the ferrum forge logo looks really awesome so there's a lot of great things about this knife i think if you have one which i know they were made in limited numbers and everything but it's a cool little knife and it's you know it's it's like kind of like a little hard use little knife but that is actually good <laughs> because uh, did the problem oh yeah there's another thing i want to bring up too but the the problem with some of the little hard use knives is they usually aren't good <laughs> i noticed that about a lot of hard use little knives like they just they're not going to be good in the hand they're not going to be good in a lot of ways this is actually really cool so now i want to talk about the lockup this thing is rock, and I'm not, I mean, rock solid, and I'm going to show you why. Well, this is a reason why a lot of knives are really locked up. Look at the lock face geometry. Do you see how it has a spot for the lock bar to, to break into, and then it has a hill to climb? Now, when you look at it from this point of view, you can see it's locked up. Nice and early, nice and solid, has a lot of room to travel over. Now, I drew a couple lock faces here to show, like, good lock geometry. So, like, the good lock geometry is where, and this is a little overpronounced, you know, but the point is, is that it has a spot for the lock bar. Um, I guess I'll just use this. I don't even know I can use this knife. For the lock bar to move over. So if this blade is the lock bar, you know, it has a spot right there to land on and set. And then as time goes through, it can travel and then it has, you know, a spot that it's not just going to push right over. It actually has a spot to really wedge itself in there. A lock like this or a lock face like this one, it's like that. You put any pressure on something like this, it's going to slide right off. And one like this, it's just going to travel all the way over as time goes on. This one has a really good lock face geometry where it has a spot to really lock into. And now when you put pressure on the back of the blade and you feel it, it's not going nowhere. It's locked up nice and solid. It's got a good taper on the geometry of the lock face. And it just tells you that this thing is going to last a very long time. Even if you continue to flip it over and over, it would still last a very long time. And it's going to be incredibly strong. There you guys go. I love you guys. Peace. Thanks, Mike.